Not looking good for the Electoral Commission as its legal team continues to suffer setbacks in the cases brought against it by aggrieved presidential aspirants. Today, an Accra High Court quashed the EC's disqualification of flag bearer of the All People's Congress, Hassan Ayariga, calling it absurd and unfair. The court, presided by Justice Barbara Tetechawe on Friday, ordered the EC to allow the presidential nominee of the APC the chance to fix the mistakes on his nomination forms, uh, stating that the commission erred in its disqualification of Ayariga. In the court's opinion, Mr. Ayariga's disqualification was in breach of the commission's own regulations governing the upcoming elections, specifically uh, Regulations 9 of the CI 94. Hassan Ayariga told journalists shortly after the ruling that he has always believed that the commission erred, a conviction the court affirmed. The APC leader, after the ruling, told journalists that the ruling was a victory for democracy. Don't rush, please. Thank the Almighty God. Yes. That's right. Let's give praise to God Almighty. God. For today, we must all believe in God. We have prayed and prayed that the court will give us justice. Ghanaians today have witnessed a very successful event today, which demonstrates to the whole world that our laws are working. No matter who you are, no matter your institutions, when you find faults, with or anomalies in your issues, you can always go to the court for redress. I am very proud that democracy is really working in this country. I am very proud that rule of law, rule of law of Ghana is working. All over the world should believe in the rule of law of Ghana. That it does not rely on me to give judgment. But it lies on the truth. And I must congratulate our lawyer, her ladyship, for giving a very wonderful judgment, and very simple and perfect. So we are grateful. We will continue to uh, campaign. And uh, we wish the rest of the people who are also going to court, we wish them well. And we hope they will also have a favorable judgment. Thank you very much. How soon are you going to the EC dome? How soon are you going to the EC dome? Come again. How soon are you going to the EC to make their corrections? Uh, the, the, the judge has already given the orders for the judge for the EC to make corrections. And I think. But you need to be going there. How soon would you be going? We have already given the documents already. We have already made. We have given the correction, but they rejected it. We've done the correction immediately. They told us that we were disqualified. We sent two subscribers for them to substitute the two. So the court has asked them to do that. So we don't have to go to the electoral commission. Currently, the, uh, the EC is challenging. So that's uh, APC flag bearer Hassan Ayarga there. So does the court's decision to quash um, this uh, the disqualification of um, Hassan Ayarga? What does it mean for the other parties? Well, private legal practitioner Samson Ladia Yenini has his perspective on that. One thing becomes clear from this uh, ruling also, and it is that this ruling clearly on a number of grounds seeks to affirm the ruling that was given earlier in favor of Dr. Papakwesi Indum. The judge, again, in this matter, like the Indum case, needed to clear a very important uh, preliminary first hedge, which was the objection to the manner by which Dr. Uh, Ayaraga came to the court. And that objection was to the effect that it was wrong to come by a judicial review and also that even if you wanted to come by what is the EC finds to be the, ro the right procedure, which is petition, you can only come after the election are over. The judge said, no, there is a, a, a right and an opportunity to be able to come by judicial review as they came. And on that basis, she went ahead and then determined the merits of the case. So... We have we know by now, just like that, Justice Chaba for determined that you can come by judicial review, like Indum did, and not only by petition. 
And this is where, when you ask what it means for the rest of the other cases, this is where I may say that we may now find that it is critically important that the matter before the Supreme Court was, was instituted because it is that case that may determine whether these procedures as upheld by the court, uh, the high court, are right or proper. So that's a private legal practitioner, Samson Ladi Ayenini, there and still in the courts. Uh, we do understand that the case uh, between the um, National Democratic Party and the Electoral Commission is being heard by an Accra court, and we will be bringing you details in our subsequent bulletins. Let's stay a while longer on the EC because it appears it has more convincing to do about the certainty of the elections being held on December 7, as some Ghanaians continue to cast doubt on the ability of the Commission to pull it off in view of the numerous legal suits against it. While well, speaking on the BBC yesterday, the chairperson of the Commission, Charlotte Osei, was optimistic that the courts were aware of the country's electoral calendar and would ensure that the elections take place on December 7. But at the close of Parliament yesterday, Minority Leader Oseche Mensa Bonsu said it was clear the EC would not have been ready for the polls had the House passed a law to change the election date to November. The disqualification of some presidential candidates, the subsequent reversal of the decision by the High Court and the appeal by the Electoral Commission makes it difficult to predict what may or may not happen on December 7, 2016. In the meantime, the nation can now tell whether or not the Electoral Commission would have been ready to conduct the election on November 7, 2016, as they indicated they were ready to do. Now, uh, Dr. Edward Brenya is a political scientist with the KNUSD, and he joins us on the line to share his perspective on the matter. Uh, Doc, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Now, we've heard the EC boss saying, yes, in spite of the legal suits, we are sure the polls will come off uh, on December 7, and that the courts are aware even of the electoral calendar. And clearly, we are seeing the courts uh, dispose of the cases very quickly in view of the little time left uh, um, as we head to the polls. Is this concern by many misplaced? Yeah, I think that um, just as you, the EC was rightly indicated, um, I think the courts know what it will mean to Ghana if the electoral calendar is changed, both in terms of uh, apathy and also in terms of the finances. And if you look at the rate at which they've been trying to dispose of cases, I believe strongly that um, uh, the concerns of people that uh, the uh, EC might not be able to hold election on December 7 is misplaced. Okay. That the court okay. will do everything within its power to ensure that no matter the number of cases that comes by, that they are able to dispose of and not change the electoral calendar. What would you say to those who say that uh, in spite of the EC's uh, explanations, in spite of the fact that, you know, the courts are, you know, quickly disposing of the cases, I mean, we will still get to that point where we will vote on December 7? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. I think for many of the critics, their worry is uh, the fact that the EC is not withdrawing some of these cases so that he can enter into negotiations given the fact that um, the PPP has won the case. Um, today, Dr. Uh, uh, Ayaga has won the case, and they are saying, well, why don't you just recall them back? I have this uh, so that uh, we don't have to be going through this uh, legal suit and the counsel's uh, counsel suit. But I think that the legal process needs to go on so that at the end of the day, we can get a clearer idea of the CIN-84 for which the um, PC is implementing and i believe in all this at the end of the day the ec will still uh, the electoral calendar will still be maintained and it will not change given the rate at which the courts are um, educating the case all right thank you very much that is uh, dr edward brenya he's a senior lecturer at the department of uh, politics at the king ust well he may not be in court but flag bearer of the convention people's party ivor green street is still fighting the perception held by many that uh, persons with disability are constrained in every possible way by their disabilities a new video the party is circulating on social media shows the cpp leader 
driving and swimming among others in a bid to convince those who might think his disability may hinder his presidential bid. Watch. That's it for you, uh, Mr. Ivor Greenstreet there. Well, Mr. Greenstreet is scheduled to take his campaign to the Eastern region from tomorrow. Uh, James Kobna Bonfe, who is a policy advisor for the party, joins us with details. Good afternoon to you. So where will Mr. Um, Greenstreet's uh, campaign take him? Good afternoon, Araba, and thank you for having me. But a quick correction. I'm the director of elections and campaigns. Director of elections. Thank you for yes, the correction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we, 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 we are running up Greater Accra. Um, end of today and tomorrow we are hoping to kick start again in the eastern region and this will be the fifth time we are going into that region uh, and as, as we are showing and demonstrating you know uh, though we are having the flag bearer the only flag bearer in the future we seem and we are indeed the ones going um, ground the country and engaging the people at the delay detail point at a detailed point, and not in the, if you like, the, the crowding atmosphere where people hardly get to hear what one says. But indeed, we are engaging them and, uh, and insisting that we have an interactive discussion for them to appreciate what is being said and for them to also feedback in terms of what we're saying and what they think about it and how they feel we should refine and reposition A or B. So, uh, as we have indicated, for us, it's about inclusiveness. For us, it's about the World Bank of Ghana. It's about the World Bank of values, the World Bank of sincerity, and ensuring that this country works for its citizenry once again as it did in the First and the Third Republic. Now, Mr. Bonfe, uh, the Eastern Region is traditionally a stronghold of the uh, New Patriotic Party. What differently are you going to tell the people to convince them not to vote for people who they have been voting for over the last few years? Araba, you talk about tradition and limited to only the fourth republic. Ghana has had three previous republics. We have existed about 60 years, not just 24 years. So you go back from 1951, when we started popular elections in Ghana. How have the people of Eastern Region been voting? It is not true that they have been voting for one particular tradition. Indeed, we have had the Eastern Region vote for the CPP before. And we are going to see the Eastern Region vote for the CPP again. But again, as I've indicated, ours is not a regional ethnic-based World Bank. Ours is a country. And don't forget, when we talk about the presidential election, there is one constituency called Ghana. And there is nothing called Eastern Region, Western Region, Brahaf Region, Volta Region, or Asante Region, or Greater Accra Region. And that is why we are engaging the people at the finest level that they can engage with us and appreciate what we're saying and also get us to understand really what the, the concerns have been over the years and what it is that we need to build on. 
that's uh, James uh, Kobna Bonfe. He is uh, director of elections for the elect uh, for the Convention People's Party. We're staying on the campaign trail this time, going to the Western Region, where the MPP flag bearer Nene Kufuado is uh, taking his campaign to. We can speak to Kweku Supepra for more details. Kweku, uh, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Araba. Now we understand that the MPP flag bearer uh, is going to uh, the southern part of the western region but what has he been telling the people i understand that he's been speaking about corruption and the current government okay so nana kufuado this morning um started talking on radio here in takrade and then took off to umpo where he met the chiefs and people and addressed a mini rally just a while ago and telling the people that the corruption and the insistent dissipation of the nation's resources um, for no benefits for the for the people and the economy of this region um, should not continue. And that can only happen if the people of the Western region and Ghana as a whole decide to vote for him. But just before we go to the next um, location in the trip, there started flowing into um, social media um, and I've called to cross-check the, the, the source of this press release in Zima um, around Atuabo, Angli, um, Axim, and its environs, making a very emphatic statement. And this statement says that they will treat Nana Akufuado's visit to the Western region, especially in the Nzema land, as a mere tourist who is just running through or visiting the communities and not as a serious politician who is canvassing the vote. The reason that they are in their press statement is that they did not find any development come their way in the Enzima land um, through the eight years of the MPP administration. And so they don't find any use for the um, Nana Kufado to come there, canvassing for vote. The people of Ekwe, Atuabu, Chikobo, and this environment state that they do not need his presence. And even if he tries to come there, they'll just treat him as a mere visitor because they outline the very significant or critical interventions that the NDC government or the um, MPs in the area um, have done and the impact that the projects that they have seen in there are making in their lives. They have line um, projects like the quantum gas, the trouble gas process, the ENI um, gas processing plant that is coming up, the Aya Community Center that has been built by Honorable Emmanuel Amakofibua, Antinata Clinics in Axim, and a whole lot of things that have come up. And they say so that's uh, Kweko Supepra, our Western Regional uh, correspondent, bringing us that update there. It's time to go to voting school now. And if you are a registered voter and you desire to vote on election day, you only need to be present at your polling station where a polling assistant or presiding officer will issue you with a ballot paper to cast your vote. But there is a validating mark you should expect to see on your ballot paper to prove it is genuine. Fifi Kumsen explores this in today's edition of The Voting School. Before you will be allowed to vote, the presiding officer or polling assistant must be sure that you are registered and have not already voted, or you are voting as a proxy. Immediately before the ballot paper is delivered to you, it must be marked with the official validating stamp of the commission. That's the position of the law. The regulation also says a mark shall be placed on the copy of the register against the number of the voter to indicate that the ballot paper has been received and a mark which shall, so far as possible, be permanent shall be made on the voter. The voter on receiving the ballot paper shall immediately proceed to one of the places set aside in the polling station for the thumbprinting of the ballot paper and secretly make on the ballot paper an imprint of the voter's thumb in the box and column provided for that purpose directly against the name and symbol of the candidate for whom the voter wishes to vote. The law then says, fold up the ballot paper and in the presence of the presiding officer and the polling agents and in the full view of the public, cast a vote by putting the folded ballot paper into the ballot box and leave the polling station.
Now, uh, let's get an update on the U.S. elections now. And uh, Joy News can report that the Democratic Party offices across the United States are preparing for a blitz of campaign activities with the aim to get more people out to go and vote. Uh, as uh, polls show that Republican candidate uh, Donald Trump is beginning to get ahead in the race. Uh, my colleague Evans Mensah, who is also head of the political desk here at Joy News, uh, is covering the elections with support from the U.S. Embassy and uh, the U.S. Embassy here in Ghana and the International Center for Journalists. Uh, he visited the Democratic Party headquarters earlier and was able to... Uh, uh, show that indeed they are stepping up their campaign but he's been speaking to an ardent supporter of the trump campaign listen so i'm here with rex an ardent um, supporter of uh, donald trump who is currently on the roll uh the, his uh, the momentum ha is on his side the polls are showing it's closed the gap but also uh, inching ahead in many, many of the battleground state. Rex, first we need to explain what is behind us. This is pretty enormous. For, for, the, um, uh, for the untrained eye, it looks like a military vehicle. What it is exactly? Well, it is a military vehicle. It's a two and a half ton uh, military M35A2C army truck used in uh, Vietnam, or it was very Vietnam air truck, and it was over in Iraq. It was in the uh, Marine Tank Division. Mm -hmm. And I acquired it in Ogden, Utah, and drove it home over the mountains and rebuilt it, basically. Why Trump? Well, because he's the best. <laughs> best at? America. Mm -hmm. Trump is for America and the American people. Okay. Um, what do you say about the criticism that people, you know, tag him with, that um, he's, he's, he's a bigot, he's racist, he's um, misogynistic, is all that? What do you say to that? Well, that's, that's always been the Democrat playbook. Mm. He's not racist. He's for everybody. He's for America and for the American people. He stands for America and he stands for American people. He's a builder and he knows how to make jobs and he knows how to make this country work. America has, has been run by politicians for years and all they've done is put us $20 trillion in debt. Trump knows how to run a company and run America like a business and that's what we need and I've said that for years and America's just been been squandering its resources. And the polls show that um, after tough past few weeks, um, he's beginning to show some strong um, you know, support across the country, uh, inching up in the, in the polls, beating uh, Hillary in Iowa, a place that has been won by Barack for two consecutive elections. How do you feel about that as a Trump supporter? Well, I, I feel, you know, Trump's been uh, the underdog all along, the, the, the press has been for Hillary, uh, the liberal press, I'll put it that way. Fox News has been the only lifesaver he's had. So that was uh, Evan Spencer speaking to uh, Trump supporter there. We will be bringing you updates on the elections uh, daily. Stay tuned to the station. But that's how we wrap up the show. If you didn't catch the live broadcast, you can get the recorded ones on YouTube. I'm Arba Crimson. Thanks for staying with us throughout this week. Have a lovely weekend.